Hey everybody, so welcome to the Summer 2024 Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase where I review some of the new tools out there in the Knowledge Graph space. I do this completely on my own. I have no relationship with any of the companies that I review. I get no sponsorships, I get no kickbacks, I get nothing. Uh, I do this because I like to see what new tools are out there and see what they're all about. And it seems like all of you appreciate being able to also see those uh, and not necessarily have to reach out to the salespeople right away or get more of a biased view from the vendor themselves. And I forgot to film which tool we are going to be reviewing today. So that one, that's the one that we're going to be reviewing today. If you're wondering where I am, there's another video coming on that soon. Uh, but also make sure you stick around to the very end of the video because my honest review is written up at the very end and throughout the whole process, I ask questions as we go and hopefully that helps you if you're interested in this. If not, at least it's entertaining, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, let's go get started. Yeah, my name is Sebastian. I'm from Yworks. We are, we're a German company that uh, specializes in diagramming. So what we do is really we focus on visualizing graphs, relational data, connected data, knowledge graphs. But we actually, we don't really specialize on a, a specific kind of graph, but we really like all interconnected data. But nowadays, of course, things like knowledge graphs are all the rage. And, and so this is what our customers do. We, we, we provide products um, that they can use, that our customers can use to build great visualization into their uh, into their own applications. And my role as a CTO by Wirework, in Wireworks is that uh, I oversee the the technical group. Nice. Yeah. So it sounds like this can integrate with a lot of different networked or graph-like data. It doesn't necessarily have to be a specific kind of knowledge graph, um, which is good. And it also means that you know if somebody already has a knowledge graph or a graph database or something, this can probably work with those things. So that's good. Okay, well, let's let's jump in. Let's see what it's all about. So this is the only one, and after this, we're going to see some live demo. So so basically, um, so I'm from Wireworks, and we create that library called Y Files, which is a software programming library. So it's meant to be used by programmers to, as I said, to integrate graph visualization into their own applications. But that's the only commercial thing that we have. We we have a, a couple of free tools available for everyone uh, to use and also for giving back to the community. And they all are powered by Wi-Fi. So in a way, they are a showcase for what you can do with, with our software library. So, And I, well, we're going to focus mostly on the uh, Jupyter Graphs plugin, plugin that we have, which is a tool that will help you to visualize graphs, knowledge graphs, any kind of graph in your Jupyter notebooks. The plugin is is a is a plugin which which we have on which has its home on on GitHub, and it's very easy to to install. So if you have a Jupyter notebook, all you need to do is do a pip install YFiles Jupyter Graphs, and and so I just opened one of these on on Google <laughs> Colab. So there's nothing you need to install. You can just like open one of our examples and open them in Google Colab. All you need is a, a Google login, and then you can like install the plugin. And once you have installed the pl plugin, it will accept all kinds of graphy data. And uh, so here's some, some just one example that, that, that I prepared. It's actually part of the examples that you can uh, uh, find in the repository to start playing around. So, so what it does, it, it loads some data, in this case, from some web uh, um, resource that's just a JSON um, file in this case. It's very simple, So, but it could also be like connecting to a graph database or to some some, some other kind of knowledge graph uh, infrastructure. And, and what we wanted to do is, so if we load our widget, you, you get an interactive widget right in your Jupyter Notebook. That's nice. So you can see when it, it's it's working as you expect it to be working. So you can you can like debug your, your data or better, you don't have to like dump it to some text file and, and then draw the lines on, on, on the dashboard. You can just like pass it the, the, the items that you have in your data set and, and then just look at the data in a visual thing. This is one way to visualize, but it's not a good way to visualize and and for example, what we have, we have the, the ability to, as they say, to, yeah, exactly, the hairball problem, the, the 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 typical problem, but there is actually inherent structure in this graph because it's it's like a hierarchy of things because oh, you yeah. start with the basic things like coal, and then you if you add fire to coal, then you get 
well, in this case, you, I don't know why, but you, it says you get fire from there. Uh, from fire, if you add more fire, you get energy and so on. So, so and this is basically uh, adding an automatic layout uh, mm. where uh, actually helps you better understand the graph. Because as if I get back to this this other, let's just go for, for example to this visualization. This you also know, highlights like too because like if you're creating like an IoT network of your manufacturing plant, it's going to look like a hairball. But the one that you just showed looked a whole lot like. The, the manufacturing architectures that I've seen. So it's kind of cool that you can map it out that way. Yeah, uh, specifically uh, manufa manufacturing architectures are often like closely related to supply chains. And then there's a flow in the data, meaning that you start with some items and then they get transformed into, into other goods and so on. And uh, using this information, meaning that the, 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 the relationship between two items actually uh, has a meaning in this case that there's a flow of, of the things going through the visualization, we should really use that information to get a better visualization. And it's so much easier to, to understand. So what, what's the inputs and what's the output? Just look at the bottom and look at the top because there's meaning encoded into the yeah. drawing, into the automatic layout. But it's not just about the automatic layout. It's also about the styling. So so these are all just like green nodes. So, so it's pretty boring. Um, and, but we, we, we improved that uh, widget so that it actually can do things like dynamically load some 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 icons. So 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 there's actually a public repository of those icons for those items in this game. So I just like declare the mapping. So just load this this from this URL from that's I think that's public homepage of that game. Just mm -hmm. load those icons into the visualization. So and, and if I go back to this now now my coal is actually well it's a coal icon that makes it much more easy to look at because you you can can find things uh, it's a visual uh, representation because, that you can latch on to yeah so so you can you can like customize the way that are that nodes are rendered or that address written not just colors but and sizes but also things like icons the text that is being displayed displayed and if there's any other properties if you have things like um for example there could be like amount uh, required or what's how much is in stock or I don't know color age uh, ID or things like that and you you don't typically you don't want to like clutter uh, your visualization put all this information right into the view you can if that information is important to you but um, um, the data that is associated with it is always available and you um, if there was more data uh, associated with with these items in this example then I would see them here in in the list which also features like this nifty feature, which we call the neighborhood view, oh, which helps you like understand. Yeah, it's another graph and it's a, just a subgraph. So if you like look at the whole graph, it's still quite overwhelming. But if you like, you're interested in, so so what is gunpowder? How is how is that involved in my graph? Just I can just, I can just click on the gunpowder part and I see only those parts related to gunpowder. But, but that's the thing, more... you're, you're visualizing the data, but where, so do you have to have your, your graph already structured, already populated, and this is just helping to visualize, or when you're in here, and maybe you see, oh, wait a minute, wind does not make sand. So now I need to go back and correct it. Can you do any correction in this, or is it just for analytics? In this specific uh, widget that we have here, it's, it's a read-only view. However, um, and this is something uh, where where it's it might make sense to to actually create a a bespoke application. This is what our customers typically do with our libraries. So so they 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 do a, like a two way binding. So um, they they really deeply integrate those visualizations into their own applications. Well, let me show you a heat map because this is I think it's a really cool visualization and it adds some some value. So um, this is the heat map heat mapping example, and the the beauty is that I. I have some some data in here, and I actually specify a, a little helper function that um, that calculates the amount of heat that I want to be visualized in in my in my visualization. It's called display. And now we have this graph, and you see that there's so that's what we call a heat map. So if you see. In this case, the heat is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty similar for most of the items, but some of these are are more red, so 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 they have higher values, and and it's up to you to to define what values should be used to like do the coloring for this heat map. So for larger graphs, um, you will quickly uh, um, see where there's things going on. For example, if the if this is a if this is a supply chain, you could 
highlight like bottlenecks in, in the graph. That for you to, to do those analytics on graph like data that, that's going to help you find the insights that you're looking for or, you know, create some cool visuals so that you can get people interested and excited about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, for example, the, the buffer here is, is, is red, uh, so this means that there's some, let's take a look, take a look at the data. Yeah, ca capacity is 30 in this case, which is probably, I don't know, too low. This is just sample data. But whatever the question is that, I have you, that you have for your data, maybe you want to like simulate changes in your supply chain or you want to see the current state or, or take a look at the history and do, do I don't know, root cause analyst, analytics and things like that. Use cases. visualization up, you can keep uploading if you don't have it connected directly to your data sources. I mean, that's ideal. But if you don't have something, um, you can just upload the diff file or, you know, something else. So, you know, it's not months and months of work and then you got to redo that every single time. I mean, normally when you're doing this kind of assessment, you're doing it for a very specific use case and then you're just going to refresh the data when needed. We have this this huge set of different demos on our on our web page. Uh, if you go to yfiles.com slash demos, you get to see this this really massive uh, uh, amount of, of different use cases. And the source code for all these like 300 demos, they are all available on GitHub. So if you're interested in okay. how one of these demos work, you can just like uh, open this demo and then hit the button over here and take a look at the source Great. code. So it's just, it's 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 on GitHub. You can just uh, watch it. And and if you want to try it out, there's also the option to just hit yfiles.com slash play which opens an interactive playground and this is for for the programmers uh, okay. so if you if you if you're not afraid to do some you want to dive deep <laughs> you can do this yeah mm -hmm. um if 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 you're not afraid to 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 look at some code um you can just like like uh, use this like little online ide to to write some code so in this case obviously i'm creating a node over here adding a label hello ashley and and then if you hit run, then you get to see the graph and, and it, it has uh, your name on it. So this is a they fully fetched IDE. You can like mm -hmm. play with 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 the API that our library provides and and go through the many examples that we have in here to really like get started and play and see how if you write code, how that feels and, and how this will affect the outcome of your graph. So uh, this cool. is just a very simple tool that you can play if you know some some programming. If you're not that much into programming, there's there's more more tools available, and it, they're all available on on our website. Let's go just to go to Firebase.com. If you go to products, um, there we we have these tools that you can use to try try out, and we have these applications that you can try. These are free free tools, and then there's the, the library if you're really into programming and if you want to create your own applications. Um, but I highly recommend you take a look into into those applications. They are free, no re registration or sign up required uh, to use. And for sp specifically, if you have things like, for example, a Neo4j database, um, mm -hmm. then looking at at, at our uh, Neo4j data explorer is super cool. Let, let me show you the data explorer for Neo4j. It's a web application. You don't need to like install it. You can just run it by opening the website and then you can can connect to a running Neo4j database, which has your knowledge oh, cool. graph data stored. And for example, um, I'm just using a, a predefined one. There's an official one by, by Neo4j, but you can also like connect to your local host. And, the, and it's that's not, not a dangerous thing to do because this will uh, connect my browser instance directly with the database. So I could even like unplug my, my internet cable Mm -hmm. It would still work. So the data never like touches our servers. You don't need to be afraid of like giving away your 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 secrets. So this will directly connect my browser instance to the to the database, even behind your firewall and so on. And what it does is uh, it starts with showing you the schema in your database. And and the the new movie database example uh, just contains uh, sets of persons and movies and how they uh, relate to movies. So, so whether they acted in a movie or whether they directed a movie and so on, there's different types. So this is just the schema, very simple schema of this database. But we can also like explore um, uh, the database in here. Um, just you, as you probably know from other tools too. So this is not super special. This is, this is actually just a regular 
Graph Database Explorer. So let, let's see uh, what movie Michael Sheen acted in. So, so he, obviously he acted in the Frost Nixon movie and, and so on. There's a number of votes in there. And that's the special thing about this visualization it, is that it shows you more information than just those colorful circles in there. Yeah. Uh, but it really tries to help you show the information that's available um, um, with 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 this data. And in this case, there's things like when the movie was released, uh, the tagline is in here, the title, number of votes. And you can add all of this to the visualization interactively. You, no need to program. You can do this. And if you're lazy, you can even ask AI to do this for you. So there's a large language model built into this that will design oh, yeah. the, those node visualizations for you. Nice. And you can use it to to interactively query query your database. Let me just try oh, this. A lot of so people won't like that. Yeah, look at this one. So let me say it. Load all the Matrix movies. Now this uh, just uh, uh, transformed my speech into a cipher query. Then access the database and then loads the movies into my visualization. Very nice. But I so this is super simple. But I can do things. I could have done this interactively using like uh, like this regular UI dialogues, but there's more complicated stuff that you you would probably not be able to do like just by clicking and, and dragging and dropping. Mm -hmm. Things like let's select those two items over here, or let's just, let's just or maybe all all those all those over here, and say um, load all the actors that acted in the selected movies. Oh, um, let's. Hope that this will work because this is the the LLM will now uh, take a look at the schema, create a cipher query, and then uh, um, see. Well, this is where I'm, I'm really excited. Where LLMs can really, I mean, obviously, knowledge graphs have been shown to help LLMs in many, many, many ways. But yep. this is where I think you know a lot of LLM assistance is is helpful because people hate a lot of well, I don't want to say a lot of people hate creating. Cypher and or Sparkle queries. But yeah. generally speaking, the barrier to entry to getting the, the insights you need from a graph, it's always with specialists in the graph space where they know the Sparkle mm -hmm. or they know the Cypher um, or they know SQL for that matter. I mean, most of the time it's a business person that's trying to figure out the insight. So being able to just ask the query or type the query and then the, the query is being generated behind the scenes that actually works with your graph chef's kiss <laughs> yeah. now of course you want yeah. to make sure it's all accurate i mean that you know you can't just let it go off the rails but um it's a step in the right direction <laughs> absolutely absolutely and that's 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 basically the 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 creative part using the creative part of lms well and that's that's where they really excel at so so like creating a cipher query that's good it's not yeah as you said it's Grounding a, 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 an LLM and things like that, are, those are important, but it's not so important for this use case because, well, we're only creating the query and the query gives us the real exactly. data. So this is yeah, you never don't need grounding for a query. Up. The query is just what it is. It's just constructing it for you. Yeah. So, so at least you will never get to see the wrong results. It's, it, it will never like, there will never be a hallucination in there. So it could happen that it doesn't understand your query, but it will never yeah. load a person that doesn't exist in the or database. there's errors so. in the code. Like I, I know there's others. Um, I know this was a Cypher query, but um, in Sparkle queries, there's some issues that LLMs have sometimes constructing Sparkle queries. But that's what I mean. Like if it doesn't run and it says, you know, it, it's not running, it's not accurate, or there's no result, then you can go in and say, okay, well, let me let me create that Sparkle query or that Cypher query or whatever it is and make mm -hmm. sure it's accurate, right? So you can do some double checking on that. Yeah, of course, for the experts, they can just like enter their Cypher query in there and, and run it. And, and then so you don't have to go that the LLM route in there. So, but that's that's something that we found really helpful, mm -hmm. specifically like combining those LLM features with with complex UI addresses, just just like the example that I just made. Uh, it would have been possible to just like like click this through this and then uh, like launch, click all these boxes over here and then select it and so on. It would have been possible to to create to do this manually, but it would have taken me like twenty clicks, and so it was just like entering one search query, and it just did the thing for me. And that's that's super super exciting. And yeah, the other thing that I want to show you is is the the, the automatic styling because if if you like uh, uh, LLMs at work, uh, you will love this one. So um, 
in this tool, you can like create templates for, for the different kinds of nodes that you have. In this case, there's this, these, those are movie nodes, obviously, and the person nodes. So there's just two different types. And there's a there's an editor where I can just like change the way that they the, the are being rendered. And I can I can do this manually and say, okay, I want the title at the top and I want this icon over here and so on. Um, but I can also like let the LLM um, um, come up with a design for me. So so mm -hmm. some, sometimes it doesn't work nice, but, but yeah, obviously, well, it found out that there's data in the um, in the in the in my database that contains the tagline, the votes. So this is not super exciting. Sometimes pressing the twice or uh, twice a second time, you get the better results, but you get the idea. The idea is that you don't have to like um, uh, like come up with a manual design for those items, but it will automatically come up with a design uh, um, with the titles, with the ordering of the elements, and just the important ones. And so that's super easy to to uh, get to know an, a new database without having to do any kind of programming or even even any kind of complicated configuration. So just like nice. hit, let the LLM do the work for you. <laughs> I hope that today you've seen that there's more. Uh, to graph visualization than just hairballs. And <laughs> I hope I was able to show you that there with the the right with the right tools and with the right amount of, of work, uh, you can actually create useful visualizations and helpful visualizations. For some of this, there's ready-made tools out there, but the more energy you put into it, the 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 more bespoke the application uh, you create, the more helpful the visualization visualization can be. And I hope that with our tools, uh, people will be able to come up with great visualizations that are really helpful to their users. Mm -hmm.